Hi there, this is Brenda Keenan with Keenan Creations and today I'm going to share some watercoloring tips. This card was watercolored using the Aqua Painter and I stamped the images on shimmery white cardstock. The cardstock is a little bit thicker than the Whisper White, but not as thick as watercolor paper. We have a piece of shimmery white cardstock and it has a nice little sparkle. Either side will work. Do three and a half by four and three quarters. We're going to use a hostess set called Bloom with Hope. We're going to ink up the stamp with black stays on. Pat the ink over the stamp. And when you stamp this flower, make sure you press nice and firmly, especially in the center. We're going to add the stem. I'm going to use a new stamp set coming out in the Occasions catalog, and this one is called Butterfly Basics. This one is a photopolymer set, so when you ink up the image, you can see exactly where you're stamping. You'll notice that when I lifted the stamp up it seemed to stick a little bit. This set is very new so the photopolymer is super sticky and the stays on ink can be a little sticky as well. So when you use the photopolymer with your stays on and you stamp on the paper you want to pull it up slowly and that way you won't risk tearing the paper. And you also want to make sure that you clean this right away. I'm going to be using an aqua painter. These are refillable. You just unscrew the top, add your water. There's a little fill line right here, so you don't want to go past that. And put that back on. And when you squeeze it, you'll see that the water will fill up in this little area here. So I'll give it a little squeeze. And see how that just filled up? And I always like to blot on the paper towel just to make sure it's not too wet. We're going to use rose red ink and you can squish the ink pad like that right in the center and that will leave some of the ink on the top of the pad that you can use for watercoloring. So when you first go to the ink you don't want to go right in the center. I kind of like to go outside. I'd rather have too little ink than too much. And You can blot on your paper towel to make sure it's not too wet. And so I'm going to start with this petal right here and I'm just going to lay on a little bit of color and I can see that this is a little bit wetter than I want so I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to add a little more here and sometimes you have to do a little bit of blotting to get it just right. So now I'm going to spread this around And I'm actually just kind of moving that water over at this petal here. So now that I've got the first wash of color, I'm going to go back and start shading. Now one thing to remember is wet next to wet is going to bleed. So if you have a different color that you're going to work with, you want to make sure that that area is dry before you go to the next color. Now I'm going to let this dry. I may come back and add additional shading, but it's a little wet, so I don't want to work it too much right now. I'm going to go back to the next one. Now this petal I can see is under these two petals, so I know that it's going to be a little darker under here. So I like to put the color on and then blot, and then kind of work that out a little bit. And then go back. I'm going to zoom in just a teensy bit here. Let's now I'm going to come over to this petal here. So I know it's going to be a little bit darker right around here and also underneath this petal right here. And so once I lay that color on, I kind of blot it off and then I start spreading that out. And don't hesitate to blot off often because you don't want to have too much water. and just kind of blend that so it's nice and soft. 
And then I'm going to work this little area here. And again, blot off. I'm going to go back to this because I want this a little bit darker here. And see how I'm kind of pushing that back? There we go. And then I know I want a little bit darker under here. So once I get the ink on here, I'm just going to kind of push it towards it instead of pulling it away because I want this to stay kind of nice and light. The trick is to get this aqua painter the right amount of water and you just have to kind of be patient. Like I said, it's better to have too little than too much because you can always add more ink but once it's soaked into the paper you just can't remove it. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to darken this a little bit. So you'll notice that I go back to the petals after they've had a chance to dry. So when you're watercoloring, the ink will dry slightly lighter and you'll find that you want to go back and deepen those colors a little bit. And then I'm going to come to the next petal over here. So again, this petal is this petal here is underneath that one, so I want to make this area a little bit darker where the shadows would fall. And again, after I put that first bit of color on, I do blot, and then I start kind of wiggling the paintbrush a little bit to soften those edges. And just work your way around the flower. And I'm not really good at determining where the shadows are. Some people are very good at determining where their light source is. I just, um, I actually try not to overthink that. I just put the color down where I think it's going to be a little bit darker and then just kind of work around the edges so it's not too harsh. And it usually ends up looking pretty good. <laughs> so have fun with it, right? And then again, we'll just keep going. And I'm really just repeating what I've already shown you. Um, once you lay the color on, blot off, and then just kind of wiggle the paintbrush around a, a little bit to soften that, and then work your way out. And try to leave some light areas. It'll help define the petals a little bit more. And remember, you can always go back and add more ink. So it's it's really better to have it too light um, than too dark. And don't hesitate to blot. This is a paper towel that I keep going to. Sorry, it was kind of out of the frame there. And then just kind of wiggle that around, but just blot, make sure that's not too wet. If you get a puddle on here, you can actually take the edge of your paper towel and press it in and it'll lift off some of that excess ink. Just make sure that you use a clean paper towel. So to clean your aqua painter and get it ready for the next color, you're just going to squeeze and you can see that the water fills in here and you're just going to go on your paper towel until there's no more ink on the brush and then you're ready to go to the next color. We're going to use pumpkin pie and I'm going to work right around the outside edge here with the pumpkin pie. Now you'd want to make sure that the petals that we've already watercolored are dry because if we had any wet petals and we went with this orange next to it, it would bleed and it might not be the look that you're going for. So I'm just going to kind of lay that color in and then I'm going to go kind of in a little circular motion with this aqua painter and blend this a little bit. Our next color is Daffodil Delight. And 
And we're just going to go right in the center and I'm going to overlap that orange. I'm going to color the stem with Old Olive. I'm going to clean the aqua painter. So I'm just going to add a little bit of this Old Olive right along the edge here and then go back. So once you're done watercoloring your flower, give that a chance to dry and then we're going to add dimensionals to the back. And this is on shimmery white cardstock. That's your standard card size. This is eight and a half by five and a half and scored down the middle at four and a quarter. And we're just gonna place this right in the center. I'm gonna go back to the stays on for the greeting on the inside. Now I'd like to stamp something on the inside in the envelope, but I don't really want to do the water coloring. So you can use the same images and just stamp them in the colored ink. And for the envelope, and we'll add the stem. I hope you enjoyed today's project, sharing some tips for watercoloring. If you have any questions, please let me know. For other ideas, you can visit me at keenancreations.com. Thanks and have a great day.